In this video, I will be summarizing a horror thriller film called Bed Rest, which was released in 2022. Before diving into the plot, I would like to take a moment to wish everyone a happy and wonderful day. Now, let's jump right into the story. The movie begins by introducing us to Julie, a woman who has recently moved into a new house with her husband, Daniel. The house is quite old, so they have hired workers to renovate it. One day, while a worker is working on the bathroom, he discovers an old bracelet stuck in the drain and assumes it belongs to Julie. Even though it doesn't actually belong to her, Julie decides to keep the bracelet. Later, when the couple is in their bedroom, Julie notices that their cat, Lou, has somehow wandered into the house. In the late stages of pregnancy, Julie and Daniel are still happy despite Daniel's fatigue from managing the house renovation. Later that night, Julie fixes the old bracelet given to her by a worker and puts it on. She then checks the box she brought with her. Suddenly, Julie hears a child whispering down the hall. Investigating the sound, she discovers her cat, Lou, hissing at a tarp-covered doorway. Julie is surprised when her husband, Daniel, appears and excitedly shows her the nursery room he has prepared. He has installed a baby monitor in the corner capable of recording video and connected to a microphone. Following this, the couple attends an academia banquet, as Daniel is a new professor at the local university. Julie was talking to an old lady at a party about her recent move to a house near the lake with her husband, Daniel. The old lady mentioned that she knew the previous owners, who had a wife that became very sick. Out of nowhere, Daniel interrupts the conversation and says that they are expecting their first child, surprising Julie. Later, when they return home, they argue because it turns out that this baby is not their first child. They had a son who passed away, and Julie is upset that Daniel lied about it. As Julie goes upstairs to leave, she briefly sees a little boy in the distance, causing her to trip and fall. She is rushed to the hospital where she starts remembering the traumatic experience of delivering their first child, who was stillborn. When Julie wakes up in the present, the doctor informs her that the baby is fine. However, an abruption occurred, which is when the placenta separates from the uterus and can lead to premature birth or even death. As a result, the doctor strongly advises Julie to remain on bed rest until her due date, which is in eight weeks. During this time, Julie should avoid any physical activity and spend the majority of her day lying in bed, with the exception of occasional trips to the bathroom. Most importantly, she must avoid stress at all costs. Due to the ongoing renovations, the doctor strongly recommends putting any major projects on hold until after the baby is born. After returning home a few days later, Daniel tries to lift Julie's spirits by showing her the various things he has set up in their bedroom. He has already prepared a tool for her to use in order to grab things, along with an iPad, her laptop, and a walkie-talkie that she can use to call for him. The following day, Julie attempts to do some work on her laptop and spends the rest of her time watching TV and entertaining herself with the cat. Later that day, when she goes to use the bathroom, she hears the sound of a child laughing and a baby crying. Startled, she quickly retreats to the safety of the bedroom. To her surprise, the closet door mysteriously cracks open on its own. Curiosity gets the best of her, and she cautiously approaches the closet to investigate. However, to her dismay, she finds nothing out of the ordinary inside. In the evening, Daniel, who has just returned home, scolds Julie upon discovering a UPS box in the bedroom. He knows that Julie must have gone downstairs to retrieve the package. This leads to another argument between the couple, with Julie expressing her frustration at feeling confined and restricted. Thankfully, Daniel quickly realizes his mistake and apologizes for complaining. They make up, understanding that Julie shouldn't be stressed during this time. Later that night, as her husband finally falls asleep, Julie lies awake in bed. She hears the familiar creaking sound of the closet door once again. When she looks towards it, she sees a figure peeking out from behind the door. Frightened, she wakes Daniel and informs him that there is someone inside the closet. Daniel immediately grabs a weapon and opens the closet, but they find no one there. 
Now, let's fast forward to day 13, which is 43 days before Julie's due date. On this day, Julie is seen passing the time by watching TV and cleaning the bracelet she received earlier. At one point, Julie notices a young boy playing alone in the yard, so she greets him out of boredom. Curiously, she asks about his mother, but to her surprise, the boy's expression turns grim and he points towards her. Adding to the eerie atmosphere, Julie suddenly receives an alert from the baby monitor, indicating movement in the nursery. Concerned, Julie investigates, only to discover that it's just her cat, Lou. Despite this, Julie remains vigilant and upon closer inspection, she catches a glimpse of someone's face in the mirror. Alarmed, she immediately calls 911 for assistance, reporting an intruder in her home. The operator advises her to secure her bedroom door while they dispatch a police officer to the scene. Hurriedly, Julie rushes to lock the door, although deep down she knows it won't deter the ghost. As the sheriff's car arrives, Julie notices wet footsteps on the ceiling, which mysteriously vanish. When Daniel returns home, Julie recounts the events to the officer. However, the officer expresses his inability to find any potential suspects, let alone an intruder and a child in the house. This causes Daniel to worry. After the officer departs, he and Julie find themselves arguing once again, as Daniel believes she may have been hallucinating. Concerned, the husband decides to hire a babysitter for Julie, despite his wife's objections. That night, unable to sleep, Julie opens the box she had been contemplating earlier. To her surprise, the box contains various items, including toys she had prepared for her previous baby, Andrew, who sadly passed away at birth. Overwhelmed with emotions, the wife reminisces about her lost son and begins to cry in solitude. Eventually, she falls asleep, only to be awakened by a noise coming from the ceiling. She notices Andrew's toy car up there, which suddenly falls onto the bed. Alarmed, she checks the box and discovers that its contents have indeed been disturbed. In a sudden realization, Julie suspects that the little boy she saw running away might be the ghost of her stillborn baby, Andrew. As if confirming her suspicions, the baby monitor alerts her to movement in the nursery room. Julie attempts to communicate with the little boy. But her conversation is interrupted by Daniel, who had been working in another room all this time. On day 23, with 33 days until the due date, Daniel decides to hire a nurse named Delmi to take care of Julie. During a conversation after a health exam, Julie reveals that she experienced postpartum psychosis and was treated in a mental hospital for six weeks after giving birth to her stillborn baby, Andrew. She shares that she kept seeing apparitions of her dead son because she wasn't ready to let him go. Delmi, in an attempt to comfort Julie, opens up about her own struggles with infertility and considers herself an honorary mother by helping deliver other people's babies. 27 days until the due date, Delmi assists Julie in the bath. While Delmi steps out for a moment, Julie once again sees the apparition of the boy and experiences a sudden pain in her abdomen. Medical staff is called, and the doctor determines that Julie had a contraction. However, it seems that Delmi and Daniel have informed the doctor about Julie's mental health history and her sightings of the ghostly boy. As a result, the doctor prescribes medication for Julie. Later, when everyone leaves the room, Julie secretly listens to her husband's conversation with the doctor. The doctor advises Daniel that if the medication doesn't work, he should consider admitting Julie to a mental health facility. This suggestion irritates Julie. At this point, Delmi begins administering the medicine to Julie, which is the most beneficial action she can take at the moment. Everything seems to be going well and Julie seems to enjoy being under Delmi's care every day. The due date is only 18 days away. One night, Julie notices the cat ball rolling out from under the bed. In response, she throws it back under the bed. However, Lou the cat meows from across the room, indicating that he wasn't the one who moved the ball. Julie becomes horrified and decides to use a mirror to see what's under the bed. As she hears fast footsteps leaving the room, 
Julie realizes that Lou the cat can also see the boy. Later that night, Julie stays awake and watches the baby monitor, referring to Andrew as her son. It is now day 46, with only 10 days left until the due date. While Julie is in the bathroom, she tries calling Andrew again, and shortly after, Andrew appears before her. This time, he warns Julie to leave because she wants the baby. However, when Julie asks him to clarify who he is referring to, Delmi enters the room and the ghost disappears. This leads Julie to suspect that Delmi is up to something sinister, while Delmi insists that they need to take care of their baby. Later, Daniel mentions that the babysitter was recommended directly from the hospital, but Julie suddenly asks her husband to fire her. Confused, the husband inquires about the reason behind Julie's behavior. Julie then reveals the truth, explaining that she received a warning from the ghost of their stillborn son, Andrew. Daniel, however, remains skeptical and leaves the room in frustration. In an attempt to dismiss Julie's delusions, he decides to turn off the nanny cam. The story then jumps ahead to three days before Julie's due date. Delmi undergoes another health examination and shares a tale about a woman who used to reside in the area. This woman had three young children and was in labor with her fourth when she got into a car accident, resulting in the death of her unborn daughter. Overwhelmed by grief, she fell into a deep depression and tragically took her own life. Before leaving, Julie asks Delmi for the woman's name, to which Delmi responds, Melandra Kinsey. Intrigued by the name, Julie closely examines the bracelet found in the drain and realizes that it bears the initials, M.K. To confirm her suspicions, she even checks the property deeds and discovers that the previous owners were a married couple, with the wife named Melandra Kinsey. Motivated by her findings, Julie contacts the local newspaper to inquire about any archived reports of a suicide that occurred in the late 1960s. The next scene takes us to the final day before Julie gives birth. Daniel is on his way home, while Julie is alone in the bedroom. Upon hearing a noise at the door, she activates the automatic vacuum cleaner and attaches a camera to it to investigate the nursery. To her astonishment, she encounters the ghost of the little boy and asks if the person who desires her baby is indeed Melandra Kinsey. Upon hearing his name, the boy quickly flees. Julie then turns the vacuum cleaner to the side and spots the boy standing with two others just before the camera stops working. Suddenly, she starts hearing heavy footsteps in the bedroom and feels someone touching her stomach. Worried that it might be early labor, she calls for Delmi's assistance. However, Delmi excuses herself to get dressed, leaving Julie alone despite her pleas. Just as Julie receives the news article she requested via email, she discovers that Melandra Kinsey, before taking her own life, had also killed her three sons. One of them bears a striking resemblance to the little boy Julie had mistaken for Andrew all along. Before she can fully process this information, Delmi and Daniel rush into the bedroom, explaining that they may have to deliver the baby in the house. Julie insists on going to the hospital, mentioning that Melandra Kinsey is already there. However, Daniel tries to restrain her. In the midst of their struggle, a cupboard suddenly swings open, causing Julie intense pain and shaking the furniture while the lights go out. They then hear a noise coming from the closet, prompting Daniel to investigate. To their surprise, they find a young boy who instructs them to hide before crawling up the wall. Realizing they need to escape the house immediately, they grab the wheelchair, but it is forcefully thrown across the room. Delmi is then pulled out of the window, resulting in her death. Daniel helps Julie make her way downstairs, but she experiences another painful contraction as the house continues to shake. This causes a set of power tools to fall striking Daniel in the head and rendering him unconscious. Julie, now alone, attempts to retrieve her phone from another room. However, the door closes before she can reach it, and shortly after, her water breaks. In a desperate attempt to seek help, she grabs a walkie-talkie and randomly selects a channel to call the police. But then, help! I'm in labor and unable to move. Suddenly, she is forcefully pulled into an unused bathroom and goes into labor right then and there. 
Meanwhile, the ghost of Melandra Kinsey finally appears in the hallway, making her way towards the bathroom. Despite the pain, Julie continues to push until she successfully gives birth to a healthy baby girl, whom she immediately cradles in her arms. However, the ordeal is far from over as Melandra Kinsey's ghost now stands at the room's entrance, reaching out for the baby's soul. Julie desperately tries to move but realizes that the floor beneath her is made of decayed wood. Holding her baby tightly, she starts rocking in the bathtub until it collapses, causing her severe injuries and leaving her on the brink of death. Despite her condition, she finds solace in knowing that her baby is safe. Just in time, Daniel rushes to her side, and she pleads with him to take the baby to safety. As Daniel attempts to break down the front door, the ghostly figure of the woman reappears, slowly approaching the baby. Summoning her last ounce of strength and hope for her child, Julie rises. In a final act of bravery, she confronts the ghost. As the ordeal comes to an end, Julie tries to call out to Daniel, but he cannot hear her. It is then that she sees her own lifeless body lying on the floor and finally realizes that she has become a ghost herself. Next, the ghost of the little boy appears and guides Julie to a room where her stillborn son, Andrew, awaits. Holding Andrew in her arms, she feels a pull back to the realm of the living as a team of medics attempts to revive her. In this moment, Delmi's ghost approaches her, and Julie asks her to care for Andrew. Delmi's ascent up the stairway to heaven with her long-lost son brings tears to her eyes. In summary, Daniel and Julie now live a joyful life with their daughter and cat, free from the ghostly figure that once terrified the wife. This is where the movie concludes. Thank you for watching the recap of Bed Rest 2022.